You may not have heard about this director's name called Xavier Dolan, but at the age of just 25, he has created a masterpiece. And today in this episode uh, on Spoiler Alert with Sanket, um, uh, me and my friend Shobit Narang uh, will be discussing this masterpiece uh, called Mommy, directed by Xavier Dolan. So uh, Mommy is a French language Canadian film and it's just incredible so and even shobit narang uh, is the guest of the show so uh, he's actually a film dissector and his view of knowledge like his knowledge on cinema is just incredible and i uh, am actually in awe of his uh, knowledge about cinema so do check it out uh, this episode so hi shobit welcome to spoiler alert with me cinephile sanket so uh, we are discussing today your one of your favorite uh, films uh, uh, which is called mommy yeah hi 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 sanket firstly thank you for inviting me on your show and yeah i would really do i would i would love to always discuss films with you i think it's always a pleasure to discuss films with you and like explore more international cinema yeah so i think yeah it's a, yeah. it's, a, it's a pleasure Exactly, exactly. So that's the reason I actually called you and discuss uh, an international film, a world cinema film, uh, which is like, uh, which is Mommy. So first I I, I would actually uh, introduce the film. Uh, so I'll like talk about uh, something about the film, which uh, so Mommy is about uh, a mother, uh, a widowed mother uh, who actually like uh, uh, whose son actually arrives from uh, from an institution uh, and then like he his son like so sorry her son is actually not that stable mentally stable so uh, she has difficulties uh, uh, growing up uh, growing her, growing him up so she uh, gets help from her next door neighbor who uh, actually tries to actually like stabilize him uh, his anger uh, since he is like a hothead i would say uh, and he gets uh, angry like really quick so that's actually the synopsis of the film uh, so shobit i wanted to ask you uh, what was your experience watching uh, this film so firstly honestly it was very unsettling like i had watched it on your recommendation because i had seen dolan's Lawrence anyways and I was blown by it. I was so overwhelmed that I had watched it twice in two days and I had to just explore more of Dolan. And uh, yeah, then I also went on to watch his other films but um, keeping our conversation restricted to uh, Mommy for now, it was very unsettling and uncomfortable to begin with, especially because the topic it dealt with and uh, about this interpersonal relationship between a mother and a child and how complicated it gets because of uh, because this child had ADHD with violent tendencies and uh, I mean uh, I just feel that like you know the film starts with uh, like really dehumanizing this child to begin with like you know because it's so unsettling and troubling but like throughout through the course of the film you have this exploration and this journey and there might not be a very overt character transformation, although there is, but yeah, it's not a very template way of character transformation. But I just feel like what happens is we start humanizing this character. And I just feel that that's done so well by Dolan because that also starts playing with other things that starts playing with like, you know, uh, how is a society? Are we rehabilitating people? How are we looking at mental illnesses? How are we as a society? you know, growing. So I just feel that, yeah, it was a very uncomfortable film to begin with, but then also it raised so many questions. And I feel like every time I watch a Dolan film, I don't watch a Dolan film. So I think even though Dolan films are very sociopolitical, they aren't preachy. They have like a lot of moral ambiguity and they leave you with so many questions. So I just feel like this film did the same for me. I had so many questions by the end of it. And I still don't know, but like it disturbed me. So I just feel like the film achieved its purpose. 
but like actually the this is what actually uh, like uh, this was a, a similar experience for me too so i watched this film for the first time in october and uh, first like i just i got introduced by the film i, I haven't watched the trailer or the teaser anything nothing i haven't uh, i haven't watched it uh, uh, but like when i started the film i was like okay what's this weird film which has a one by one uh, aspect ratio and i was like i'll just watch some of it and then i'll just uh, exit it and uh, this was the th- uh, thinking process uh, back then uh, when i uh, like started watching this film and then i got introduced to these characters like uh, first of all this guy who is like uh, unstable like he is violent and like he used to uh, raise his like uh, he's to get angry at his mother too and i was like oh wow like what the fuck am i watching it and then i was like okay when when uh, his when his mother actually uh, get gets help from the next door neighbor and when he when uh, this boy used to like not harass but like uh, he used to make fun of her uh, and when she actually didn't beat him but uh, she took him down and then like this guy got scared and he pissed his pants off and i was like oh he this guy is also very vulnerable and like i was like i i i was uh, without any words and uh, and then later on in the films uh, so, uh, so in in this film actually uh, two times uh the aspect ratio gets wide and uh i i was like uh, i i was like wow uh, uh, whenever the aspect ratio is getting wide uh, i was like uh, this like something is getting uh, something happy is uh, going to happen but then suddenly the aspect ratio just uh, returns exactly. to one by and um, one yeah. by one exactly and like uh, i was like oh no like uh, and now uh, again something bad is going to happen and i i actually was rooting very badly uh, that something good should happen to the young uh, young boy that like uh, he's suffering his suffering was too much uh, and i feel very uh, like many people uh, would relate to this guy and even the the environment which uh, zevier dolan created and actually like obviously i i like uh, i thought that uh, uh, like before watching this film i thought that uh, this zevier dolan will be in this film since uh, he uh, himself uh, act in almost all of his films but uh, then i like i uh, i was introduced to this guy and i was like where the hell is zevedol or zevedolan and okay but then i got to know that he is not in this film but still i would say i am actually like as, uh, unlike you i am actually yet to watch uh, other uh, of uh, like other zevedolan films but uh, i actually It's wanted really to watching. ask you yeah actually yeah that's the reason i actually need to watch it but uh, since you have watched uh, all of his other works as well uh, can you tell some similarities uh, in his work uh, also without giving much of uh, other films since we are uh, like mainly focused with this films we will yeah. be talking about like the spoilers as well but without giving the spoilers from other uh, of his films yeah. uh, what were the similarities uh, in his uh, film, films yeah okay so uh, i think it raises uh, too many questions so i will just try to like quickly break them down firstly yes uh, i think very well put by you although like one small change yes uh, this there was one more complication added like with something that made it more unsettling was that this person was also potentially sexual offender like he, this person was definitely a sexual offender and did not understand boundaries but then also uh, like that was also like one of the bigger complexities of this character so that made it even more unsettling i feel and uh, yeah i think like that's the only part which like was, was also so much more unsettling because like you know dolan wanted us to humanize this character but i was i'm not really sure if i was able to completely humanize this character because of this thing however there are so many other things that it like made me question yes uh, the point that you had just mentioned about the part when he peed his pants i think like 
that was done so so well because like at one moment you see this character being a threat to all of humanity like literally you feel that this cat this character is threat to all of humanity and why this this character exists and my immediate instinct was to just kill this person like you know sometimes you just feel like you know this person does not is not should not exist like here this person is a threat and uh, yeah but like this when this person peed his pants i was so moved and i don't know when, um, just like little bit of the track i remember there was this humanizing scene in hasi to fasi as well by vinil vinil mathu and i feel like uh, somehow it's so like you know uh, we see some people as not human and when they have like the most human traits like crying bursting into tears or like peeing you start like humanizing them you start understanding them as equally human which i feel like was done very well in that scene about the aspect ratio as well uh, again like because the happiness was squeezed and they were literally in a very small box of sorts their world was very limited it was just there and it's only twice that you were able to see that uh, the box has widened and uh, yeah and uh, very well done by dolan and uh, i feel like one more thing which i need to mention is just that one of the scenes which is the montage scene and which i'm sure like i'm not checked it on youtube but if you just go on youtube and search for mommy best scene you will find that scene because i think unanimously everyone can agree that was the best scene in the film because i don't know like when this happens like in, in that very moment like you i was also rooting that i just hope like this character everything just becomes okay and this character lives a better life because as human this character needs to live a better life and we are rooting for his mother and the neighbor who's trying so hard and we were really rooting for it but then dolan just stinks it stinks it back to the reality so i just feel like again uh, just reiterating it was done well now about dolan's other works i have seen four of his films and i think one thing which i love about dolan which is almost made me say that i'm obsessed with dolan is just that dolan does not care about the rules of cinema like he does not care about the rules of cinema he will all like a lot of critics have also disliked him even this idea of having like one by one aspect ratio because they found it very self indulgent but i feel like dolan doesn't care like you know if you're watching a dolan film like there might just be a still photography there might be a there might be a fast track camera there might be like you know a slow motion there might be just like you know a a, a framed painting Dolan can just like do anything he can just like play with the screen he can just suddenly make it more metaphorical and that's really okay like you know if, if it's a literal scene like just um, from the top of my head I remember the scene in Lawrence anyway where uh, where she break, breaks up with Lawrence and uh, like there's a butterfly coming out of the mouth of Lawrence just like you know you know that it's not happening for real but like you know in a movie that's very literal Dolan will suddenly put an element which is so metaphorical A like fantasy again, kind of like, element. Fantasy kind of element. It's very metaphorical because, and uh, more so, and it's always been there since his first film. Like when he made I Kill My Mother, literally, like you know, every scene it felt like because so Dolan also believes in aesthetics a lot. Like Dolan also likes making his screen very visually pleasing, and a uh, lot of scenes are there in it to add that aesthetic value. so yeah i mean like i kill my mother as well every time the two uh, people the mother and the son are talking they are sitting side by side and that doesn't happen it's only because he wanted to create that frame dolan did that so dolan is very like he doesn't care he can just like move from one frame where there's a slow motion to one frame where there's actually a stop motion to one frame where there's something metaphorical happening on the screen to one frame where there's just music so dolan really does not care about the rules of cinema all he's trying to do is tell his story And then he tries to see what's the best way in which he can do it. So what's happening sometimes on Dolan's screen is not what's happening in real life. It's what the character is feeling. And I feel like that's so wonderful because Dolan is able to bring out that internal feeling of like one person onto the screen. And uh, yeah, <laughs> wow! Like I uh, actually got to know about like his unique skills as well. But actually, you talked about uh, the montage scene. I actually wanted to uh, say that. Uh, it was the like it was the best thing in the film for me and uh, also uh, like I, i actually wanted to first talk about this montage scene so when uh, the screen got widened i was like wow just like something big gonna happen and i was 
thinking like this is actually the end of the film and like while he's growing up he's getting the degree and he's getting married and all that stuff uh, happening and everything is so happy and I, I, in this film actually i have to admit that uh, i was actually rooting for uh, for a happy ending but like obviously it didn't happen but uh, and I, i was actually rooting that uh, uh, at the at the point where he gets married uh, it should be the end but then when he like uh, again uh, transformed the aspect ratio into 1 by 1 i was like oh my god like again and i was like no please don't but like uh, uh, <laughs> it's Xavier Dolan and also another thing i wanted to talk about that uh, when he tries to kill himself uh, in uh, in a shopping mall i think so uh, it was a, a very uh, it was a hurt like a a painful thing for me uh, to see in a film uh, because like obviously i was thinking that uh, why does the character uh, like why was he doing this and i was completely terrified by it and uh, it, it got me very hurt uh, by watching that yeah. film <laughs> and even uh, i feel like there are too many layers to it uh, firstly yes i feel that uh, even that is one of the scenes that really moved me when this person try to kill himself and uh, again i just feel like uh, it's not that we did not see that coming to be honest like i just feel that that also raises such an important question along the lines of suicide awareness because a lot of time why people ideate suicide is because when they feel that they really are a burden to someone and so just that idea like all this while so one more thing is that one more thing that really made this character more complex was that like there was so much realization in this person that he was a trouble to his mother like on so many occasions especially like you know when there was this lawyer sequence and like this mother was like really trying to get a lawyer for him and uh, this royal uh, so at that point he was very like unsettled this child so like you know you could really see how he was seeing himself as like a big burden to his mother so this realization was there and he attempted uh, suicide and uh, yeah it was a very deeply distressing scene and uh, i don't know i just feel like the film had so many scenes where you literally hated this character but you also just wanted to like protect this character like somehow like you know while this watching this film i was praying for this character like somehow something happens that the family does not go through it that the mother doesn't have to go through it because i just feel like you know uh, again like for the like for me the takeaway was the mother's character because so many times i could sense her conflict i could really feel it because with this person i knew and as like uh, and this person i knew that okay like you know whatever it is if the character of mother weren't there i was not, i would have not been able to humanize this character as much it's only because when i viewed it in like you know in, in an environment with the mother and how it was reacting and how it was just adding up i just feel like that really changed a lot of things and even that interpersonal relationship uh, i just want to like because we were mentioning about the pain scene there was one more scene towards the end which literally broke my heart was uh, when the mother manipulates him into sending him to that facility again and like the the officials they attack this person only to capture him and then he's screaming and crying and he's telling his mother that he does not want to go under shock so just this idea that what we are calling as rehabilitative system like do we really need to give shocks to humans even if they have adhd with violent tendencies like don't you feel like that idea is so inhuman so again like because again our society as large we were so not rehab re- rehabilitative i just felt like i did not want to dehumanize this character because this character was any which way going to get dehumanized because dolan had set it in the universe where this character is already seen as like the most the character that should not exist you start rooting for this character and like because of everything so yeah i just feel like that scene was so well done and yeah that really made me think about like you know how are we treating people at the prison people at the facilities we literally treat them as not humans and i feel like that's so troublesome even for me the uh, biggest takeaway was that uh 
so uh, there's a guy who is not uh, like stable mentally stable but uh, when he gets some help from an outsider uh, he gets to like he uh, heals himself so that's actually for the uh, for that's me actually was very true. that's very true like i think i'm glad that you brought this point up because that also like talks about restorative justice and if you have seen like um do aake barahat or like, like the good place these shows and this show and that film is based on this idea of restorative justice that when there's external support given in a vacuum people can change like people can definitely change and this character was changing but but because there were so many other factors that were adding up that were the expenses the debt like so this if this if those things did not exist and just this love and support could have changed this character is what nolan also wanted us to believe yeah that's the thing but uh, shobit uh, i have to end this conversation uh, now so but uh, obviously it actually is a pleasure talking to you about this film and not just this film but like cinema in general since i am actually a big fan of your uh, your movie watching and also your uh, your uh, thoughts about uh, those po- uh, personal films also i haven't seen lawrence anyways but i have actually i will uh, like definitely like watch that uh, super soon and obviously read that article of yours uh, which uh, you have uh, written, uh, written it uh, uh, recently so yeah shobit thank you so much uh, for coming to this uh, show and i'm hoping that you will uh, come uh, again to this show and like we will discuss uh, some other the film also most definitely likewise man i think yeah i uh, i think i'm eternally grateful to you for like recommending me good films and uh, for like really hyping me up to watch more international cinema i think i was not that person before i met you so yeah it's always fun so yeah uh, for all those audience uh, all the audience uh, please subscribe to my channel and also follow me on uh, all the podcast streaming services like apple podcast spotify so uh, see you in the next episode all right see you